Inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. Tiffany, you've got a really amazing story. Why don't we start things off with you telling us what your rentals have done for you? Oh, my rentals have been life-saving, life-changing. I've traveled around the world. Um, I have a sense of security. Um, and I have, I get to, um, arrange my time, how I see fit. What I love about Tiffany's story is that when she was getting started, she really didn't know what she was doing. She made a lot of mistakes. She did a lot of things wrong, but she eventually figured it out and she put together a small rental portfolio and pre COVID she was actually traveling the world full time. She was exploring all kinds of really cool places and it was all paid for by her rental properties. On the show today, we're going to figure out exactly how she did it. Joining us on the show today from Chicago is Tiffany Green. We'll take a really quick break. We'll come right back and we'll meet Tiffany. The first step in buying a rental property is to get pre-qualified. And I would suggest you work with a lender that specializes in working with investors because the last thing you want to have happen is to get to closing and find out the money's not there and you can't close. The lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. She's a nationwide lender and she'll pre-qualify you for free if you mention Rental Income Podcast. Find out more today. Contact Chaley at RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E LendingGroup.com. NMLS 42056. I'm really interested in hearing what you've done. This almost sounds too good to be true. So you've got a small rental portfolio and that portfolio has paid for you to travel the world? It was just something I've always longed for after graduating from, uh, I mean, before going to college. I just think that's the coolest thing ever is to travel around the world. Yeah. And so my gap year came in my 40s, but <laughs> I mean, I was able to do it. <laughs> that's so awesome. So what what did you do? You, you just kind of packed up and left? Did, did you have a plan on where you wanted to go and what you wanted to see? Well, I, I had a plan. I, um, I installed security cameras so that I could always check in, look back on the property. And, um, and, and I already had my team of maintenance people that I've been working with for years. So I just felt comfortable. And this was like the greatest experiment for me. I was like, you know, I really want to see, can I manage these properties from abroad for a year? And if I'm able to do this well, then that means I can do this for like the rest of my life, how I choose, you know, how I want to do it. And um, and mind you, I already had the confidence of running um, my property in Chicago, the duplex from New York. So I had the experience. And so I was just let me try it. And it worked out. And so um, I signed up with um, a, a company called Remote Year. And they were kind of like the forefront of like all these travel companies where you can travel as a group and they would set up the um, the workspace. They would set up your accommodations and also set up um, activities for you. And so they mapped out the agenda for the whole year. And so I started traveling with like 78 new people. (laughs) And they, so they, they put together a plan. We're going to go to this city and then we're going here and then we're going here and you, yeah. would, you kind of move around and, and check out different areas. That, that is really, really pretty cool. Well, where did you go? I I went to places like Brazil. Um, I went to South Africa. I went to um, the Philippines. Um, yeah, we went to Argentina. Where else did we go? We we literally like went all over the place. Uh, oh, it, and it was my first time we went to Mexico City. Like you hear all this horrible stuff about Mexico City, and it's it's a huge um, uh, metropo- uh, metropolitan city. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's full of culture and food and lovely people. Wow. So, yeah. And, and the whole time you're managing your your rentals remote. Like, did did your tenants even know that you were? That you were out of the country? No, they didn't know. Wow. 
So how did you do that? Like, did you just have like a Google voice number and if they needed to call you, they would, they would just call you or just call your cell phone or something? Well, at the time, um, Google started this thing called Google, Google Fi uh-huh. or Google Fee. Okay. I think it was, it's Project Google or something that way. Anyway, so which it allowed you to keep your same U.S. phone number and make calls internationally. Okay. So they could, so I, mm-hmm. they could call you, you know, they think you're in Chicago, but you're in Mexico City and, and you're just talking to them and dealing with whatever, whatever the issue is. Yeah. I just had to make sure like when we were, when we were in Asia, you know, because of the time difference, um, I just had to make sure like, cause sometimes I will receive a text or a call like at 3 AM, which will probably be like, I don't know the morning time for them. Mm-hmm. So I just had to make sure to like wake myself up. And so I had, I could, think clearly and answer <laughs> right, them back right. and stuff like that. But again, my, 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 my thought was, uh, I don't fix plumbing issues. I don't fix maintenance issues. So it doesn't matter if right. I'm there or not. Right. So you have to have a maintenance team that you trust that you've worked with for years. So I'm just the facilitator. Like, you know, I want the tenants to keep me in the loop because I want to know what's going on with the property. But from there, once I received a text or a phone call from the tenant about a problem, I would immediately call the maintenance person. And I I also think it's important, like, um, if it's a plumbing issue, I have a plumber. If it's electrical, I have an electrician. I don't like the the one person that does it all. Yeah. Like I want a trained professional to take care of whatever situation is going on. Yeah, I I think that's good advice. I mean, it, a, a plumber can fix a plumbing issue so much quicker because he's doing it all day every day than a handyman mm-hmm. that you know it might take him twice mm-hmm. as long or he might not fix it right. Um, he. He might not fix it right. And then it just costs you more to have it to fix something again. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, too, I just want to make sure that my tenants have the best. Right. Like I want a licensed professional that's going to come in and make sure that we're doing things by the book. I don't want to put anyone's life in jeopardy or anything like that. So it's just worth it to me yeah. to hire good professional people. Right. Yeah. And it, 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 that's a really good point. It, it doesn't matter where you are. I mean, whether you were in Chicago or whether you're somewhere else, if you're just forwarding the request off to a maintenance person, it doesn't matter where you are. Right. So then what happened? Like, so then you stopped traveling at some point and, and came back to the States? So, well, yes, I came yeah. back to the States and uh, I just wanted to lay my eyes on the property and it was as if I had never left. Wow. wow. <laughs> it, it was like it and I'm I'm meticulous too. Like any little thing that goes wrong, I want my tenants to call me because I'd rather fix smaller problems mm. than problems that develop into something much bigger right. or larger. So right. and I'm always looking to automate things. And I think it also comes um with having a good realtor. So my real estate agent is the best. So, uh, and this is another automated thing. Say for instance, if, if I'm not there, um, I'll have the maintenance guy come over and and he'll give me a list. He'll say, this needs fixing, this needs fixing. I'll ask the tenant before they leave. Hey, did you, you know, is there anything that I need to work on? Is there anything that I need to fix? And, you know, you call the maintenance people over and they fix it. Then you have the apartment clean. My real, my real estate agent, she'll come over. She'll say, hey, Tiffany, uh, I, before I show it, I really, I think you need to take care of this or this needs to be done. And then she'll show the apartment. Again, I I don't need to be there to show the apartment. Um, it just takes up too much time. Right. I'd rather pay a professional person to manage that for me. She'll find me tenants. A lot of times I don't even meet the tenants. It sounds like you, you've you really got the remote management figured out. I, I want to talk about how you did this, like how you've been able to pay for your lifestyle. Because what I think is pretty amazing is that you don't have a large portfolio. You have a fourplex 
you have a duplex, and you have a condo. Let's talk about how you first got started, because when you bought your first rental property, you you were working in an industry that's pretty unstable, where you could really lose your job at, at any moment. How did you have the confidence to buy a property knowing that your employment could dry up at any time? Well, at that time, yes, radio is very... Um, what do I want to say? Um, it's a high turnover. Right. Yeah. But at that time, um, I was at WGCI in Chicago and um, people have worked at WGCI for long careers. So um, I wasn't thinking about moving. Um, I was just ready to purchase my first home. It was good. It was a good time for me. Um, I saved all my bonus checks. Um, I borrowed from my 401k for the down payment. I had good credit. Um, I had a good job. So it was perfect time to get a mortgage. It was like the next step in my life. Okay. And I've always wanted a home and property. At the time, were you thinking were you thinking of it as an investment or were you just thinking, I'm going to buy a house and... I'm just going to live here. Both. Okay. okay. <laughs> because in, in, in radio with a high turnover, I just knew like, you know, buying a house can be a big risk. And I wanted some type of security. And I was like, if, if, or when I get fired in radio, like I won't be able to afford this mortgage. How can I do that? And, and that's when I knew I had to buy, um, a duplex or a four or mm-hmm. four flat. Right. They call them flats in Chicago. And, and I just knew I had to do that because in my mind, if I had to go work at McDonald's, um, then I can still afford my mortgage payment. Right. So did it work out that the other side of the duplex paid your mortgage? Absolutely. Awesome. And at, at and at the time, um, you know, now they have this whole formula for buying uh duplexes and six flats and all this other stuff. But at the time, I just didn't realize that. I just wanted security for my job. Mm-hmm. So I, I were you thinking, okay, well, like this is a great deal. I'm going to put a down payment down and now I don't have to pay rent. I'm living for free in the duplex. At, you know, at the time, I was like, somebody's going to pay my mortgage if I lose my job. Right. Okay. And th- that was the only thing that, that was I was thinking, thinking of. And um, y- and I did everything wrong, too. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do? Like, what happened? I did everything wrong, and it still worked out. So <laughs> just go for it. Well, you know, at the time that I purchased... Um, um, I overpaid for the property. Um, this is, this was, this was around the time of like 2003, 2005 and everything was overpriced. Mm-hmm. So I probably, pay, the, I think the property was like, um, 317,000. It was probably worth 150. I just really overpaid. Okay. The, the construction on inside of the house was so shabby, but I didn't know what to look for. I had no idea. No one ever trained me, but that house trained me. So I wouldn't trade that for the world. Like I literally had to um, find good electricians, find a good um, contractor, good plumbers, um, good heating and AC people. And in hindsight, this is how I learned about property management, how to t- how to fix things, um, how to recognize a good job from a bad job. And it also helped me to vet my um, maintenance people that I would use in the years to come. Perfect. So you, you really kind of found the winning formula w- with, with that with that property. And then you decided that you were going to move. And you, you moved to New York City, and what what happened then? Did, did you you rented out the other side, and now you were making a profit on that property? Yes. So um, the I rented out the duplex on both sides and moved to New York, okay. and 
New York was another, well, at that time, the formula was, I went to like a real estate class, right? Mm -hmm. And so at this time, it was like a seminar. And Mm -hmm. at this time, the whole thing was, get as much credit as you can and buy the biggest piece of luxury property that you can, then refinance and do it again. (laughs) (laughs) And so I pull money, um, I pull equity out of the duplex. And so I took that to go buy a, a condo in New York. And this time, I think the condo was like 617000 And then the economy crashes. And a month later, literally after putting down the down payment, the market crash. Um, and I bought the condo pre-construction. Okay. And so um, this, this mm-hmm. you were just, you were looking at this as I'm going to buy this property. I'm going to live here and it's hopefully going to appreciate like this was, I guess the New York condo was more of an appreciation. Yes. Play. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Because, because in New York, it's all about appreciation right. because everything is so expensive here. And, you know, in Chicago, you can actually, find a nice affordable property and make living income. Mm -hmm. So you really have to know the difference between the two markets. But I, again, uh, go through the hardest of hard times. So now my whole life savings is inside this condo and, um, I, I, and I couldn't get a loan. So, you know, during this time, the banks would not loan to anyone. And luckily the developer uh, went and found, uh, had his bank guaranteed the loan for, it was like seven people in this condo. It's a big, beautiful building right on the water. And, and, and this is the thing about real estate. You go through your ups and your downs, but the key to me is you have to hold on to the property. So, <clears throat> right, so you bought that property at the top of the market, the market crashed and yes. so if, if, were you underwater on it for uh, for many years? I was underwater for like six years wow. on this for six years because soon as I bought it, the market crashed wow. a month later, a month later. Mm. And I went to the lawyer. I was like, oh, can I please, can I please get the down payment back? And the lawyer was like, no. <laughs> I probably, I probably could have got the down payment back and probably didn't know any different. Right. But you just, you. You just have to learn how to survive. And he said no. And thank God he said no, because it, you know, um, that condo helped me um, take it to the next level. I just had to hold on to it, you know, through the hard times. So you you get Um, through the hard times and then, then the market came back and then the property appreciated? So then, yes, then the property appreciates. And I, um, I had to sit down and do the math because it's like, you know, okay, you have a property in New York, hold on to it, hold on to it. Um, but at the time I really wanted to, um, work for myself. It was, it was the time that I was coming out of radio, um, and the numbers just made sense to you know, sell it in New York, buy more property in Chicago because the rents are very good in Chicago. Okay. So and you were, um, that's what I did. So you were looking more at generating cash flow that y- you had this appreciation. You, you've been through the ups and downs of, of, uh, of owning New York city real estate. And you just, you wanted monthly cash flow. So that's why you decided to invest back in Chicago. I did. Yeah. And throughout the whole time of going through the recession, the duplex still um, maintained. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the tenants still paid their rent. It was like the, the duplex was still a lifesaver for me throughout the whole recession. So it just made sense to repeat. <laughs> right, right. So that's when I was able to buy the the four flat in Chicago. That one panned it out. And it it took a long time to work out all the problems with buying the four flat. And I had, uh, you have to have good people surround you too. So my realtor, I almost gave up buying the four flat 
but my realtor would not give up. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what kind of problems did you, did you have with the four flat? With the four flat, the owner, the owner never kept good paperwork. So he had back taxes that were crazy. Um, he, um, had quick D one of the units to his cousin and she wanted to make sure she was paid, um, um, for, uh, whatever money he owed her. Um, and then the, the four flat is actually a three flat with a coach house in the back. So the coach house was owned by someone else. So I, <laughs> I literally purchased the three flat first. Uh, we worked out all the details of trying to get all the paperwork in order, take care of liens, uh, that he had the taxes. Um, and once that worked out, then, um, probably like, um, probably like five months later, I purchased the, um, the coach house in the back and then, yeah. Okay. So, so mm -hmm. was the appreciation from the, the property in New York, was that, a, th did that give you the down payment money for the property, the, for the four flat or were you able to buy it with cash with, with the appreciation? So when I was able to um, sell the property in New York, then I was able to pay for the properties in Chicago in cash. That's awesome. Okay. Wow. So it's like, you know, it's like you think about that, that that's just so incredible that, that, you had this large sum of money by just living in this property that it, it, it appreciated and that appreciation was able to really set you up for the rest of your life. That's really, it, it, yeah, <laughs> that's really yeah. awesome. Before we wrap things up, I just want to point out how incredible and how simple Tiffany's story is. She's able to live the lifestyle that she lives because she has a four unit building free and clear. I mean, four units, she's not saying she has 50 or 100 or 200 rentals. She has a four unit free and clear. And that property is generating enough profit for her to live the, the life that she wants to live. And I also love that this didn't happen overnight, that this is something that she worked at over a period of time. And sure, she got lucky, the market appreciated, but she didn't go into it thinking, I'm going to make a ton of money and I'm going to be able to buy a fourplex. That just kind of evolved as as time went by. But I, I think if you're intentional about it, that you want to own four properties free and clear, whether it's a four-unit building or two duplexes or four single-family houses, however you want to split it up, I think if you're intentional that you want to get those four properties free and clear, I think you could do it, and I think you could probably do it quicker than Tiffany did. You just got to figure out how to do it. And Tiffany did it by buying that condo that appreciated. And maybe that'll work for you. Maybe it won't. But I think if you really try, you can find a way to to pay off for properties, whether it's making extra payments on your mortgage or doing something on the side to generate money. I think if you really work at it, you could be in the same position that Tiffany's in. And maybe you don't want to travel the world and maybe you don't want to do exactly what, what she's doing, but I think you'll have choices in life. And that's really the key to life is to have choices and to be able to do what it is that you want to do. So I, I really applaud Tiffany and I'm, I'm so happy that she was able to pull this off. And, and I, I, I just want to encourage you that if this is something you want to go after, I think you can do it. You, you just got to really, really work at it. I'd like to thank our sponsor today for making today's episode possible. It's Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. If Tiffany inspired you and you're ready to, to buy your first property or you want to add to your portfolio, the lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge. She's a nationwide lender and she specializes in helping investors buy rental properties. She has a ton of different loan programs and she can find something that'll work for you in your situation. If you want to find out more or set up a time to talk to Chaley, just go to ridgelendinggroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E, 
lendinggroup.com. If you mention Rental Income Podcast, she will waive all the pre-qualification fees. NMLS 42056. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Make sure you subscribe. We have new interviews every single Tuesday. And if you subscribe, you'll get notified as soon as they come out. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast.